listening to Lawfare Podcast Shorts, an update with Roger Parloff on the Oath Keepers trial. So, Roger Parloff, senior editor of Lawfare, you have been in court for the entire Oath Keepers trial so far, which has consisted of uh, opening arguments and uh, the beginning of the government's case in chief. We talked about the opening arguments the other day, but what evidence has the government presented so far? We've had four witnesses so far. We, uh, an FBI agent, the main case agent, Michael Palian, a uh, former Oath Keeper, uh, very briefly, only for about three months, named John Zimmerman, a very, very strange witness whose name it currently is Abdullah Rashid. He's had six names in the past, since, well, since 2007. Uh, and uh, another Oath Keeper who has been there a longer time, a former Oath Keeper, Michael Adams. What is the story that they have told uh, so far? What did, the, what did the FBI agent testify to? And what did these uh, former Oath Keepers have to say? Yeah, uh, the FBI agent, he's the main guy. So he was introducing uh, hundreds of uh, digital uh, signal chat texts and Facebook messages. It was very important evidence and some videos. Um, the rhetoric of the Oath Keepers is, is consistently over the top. If that were a crime, they'd be sunk. Um, and, uh, it, and it begins uh, election day, essentially, is election night. Um, at uh, November 4th, really, in the early morning hours, is when they begin, uh, uh, Rhodes begins talking about, you know, we aren't going through this without a civil war and begin quoting George Washington, we need to conquer or die. He begins to, and and uh, I guess the other crucial evidence so far is a meeting held, a go-to meeting, that's like a Zoom meeting um, uh, on November 9th, uh, uh, 2020. And that's where he's talking about um, uh, we need to follow the example of a Serbian patriot, and uh, he's distributing, eventually distributes to all the people uh, a plan that was used uh, in Serbia to overthrow Milosevic, I think. And um, that includes, as one of the steps, storming the parliament. The important thing in that, maybe the most important thing, is that he talks in there about these QRFs, these quick reaction forces that he's going to have, you know, across the river in, in Arlington. And to be fair, in November 9th, they're talking specifically about preparing for the Million MAGA March on 11-14, on November 14. So we aren't quite there yet, but um, he's uh, uh, talking about how we need the... Uh, uh, weapons arsenal in Virginia uh, in case Trump invokes the Insurrection Act. And then he sort of says the quiet part out loud. He says, uh, now, really, the Insurrection Act is just legal cover for us. Um, I mean, because we're going to do this whether Trump uh, invokes it or not. We're not letting this Chinese communist puppet take over. So th there was some pretty powerful stuff. And, and was, this, was this all in the, uh, the FBI agent's uh, presentation of electronic material, or was, these, was this also the testimony of uh, the Oath Keepers who uh, the government has put on? No, this was all um, the uh, FBI agent. I mean, uh, there were a couple people that were on that uh, 11, uh, that November 9th uh, go-to meeting. And uh, I, I can talk about them uh, as well. Yeah, so what what is the government uh, trying to put on uh, with the, the Oath Keeper witnesses that they presented? Yeah, the first guy uh, was frankly to me, um, I don't know if it was a wash or not. I, I, 
I wasn't overwhelmed. I think the main, he wasn't with the Oath Keepers very long. Um, and what put him off, you know, a lot of people join the Oath Keepers because they want to help police and firefighters uh, uh, and first responders, you know, fight hurricanes or, you know, uh, uh, respond to hurricanes and, and things like this. At, at least, you know, th this is what they say. Also, uh, they are very concerned about Antifa and BLM. And but anyway, what turned him off was that Rhodes and on, on, he went on, on the, to the mega million mega March, November 14th. And that night Rhodes got angry with people. And, um, but he, he, he was talking about having people dress up as what they view as targets for Antifa and BLM, which is, um, and I know this is strange, but, uh, people, very weak people, like the elderly, women pushing baby carriages, and the idea is that the, the uh, Oath Keepers would dress up like such people and then when attacked, turn on them and beat them. And this said, this turned off this guy who, you know, wanted to fight hurricanes, and he was saying, uh, tricking people into attacking so we can give them a beat down is not why he got involved. Also, he said that the QRF uh, on November 14th, uh, the Million MAGA March, was not about combating Antifa. He said it was about being there in case Trump invoked the Insurrection Act. And the, that that's a mixed message because the defendants seem to have mixed defenses. Some uh, Rhodes and uh, Megs are are saying, well, the QRFs were about the, you know, in case Trump invoked the Insurrection Act. The other defendants seem to be saying it was about combating Antifa. So uh, that's all a, a little mushy. Um, and what about the Oath Keeper, the other Oath Keeper witnesses? The other Oath Keeper, the last one, the two others were both Oath Keepers. The third was one of the weirdest witnesses I've ever seen. Um, uh, he was a, a, just in manner, a very strange. His name was ostensibly Abdullah Rashid. Um, and, uh, but it developed that he was the tipster that gave them this tape. And of course, it doesn't really matter if he's a scummy guy because the tape is the tape. And um, uh, no one's really saying it's not authentic. This is the November 9th go-to meeting tape. But um, it did develop that um, he had used all these names and he had been convicted of aggravated sexual assault of a child. And uh, the defense is saying that he, he turned it in not because he was offended by what the government was saying, which was his story. I'm sorry, because he was offended by what the Oath Keepers were saying, which is what his story was but rather because he wanted the government help to help give him a new identity so that he could, um, you know, not have to register as a sex offender. But, um, and then the last witness was pretty impressive, really. He was a longer time um, uh, Oath Keeper, Michael Adams. Um, and then he had left and then he came back again. Uh, he came back in summer of 2020 because, you know, he believed uh, Antifa and the BLM uh, rioting was uh, endangering uh, businessmen. And, um, but uh, he also began to freak out uh, in the November, December timeframe when Rhodes began to issue these, they actually open letters. They were, on, they were public letters on the Oath Keeper website, but and he called it unchained rhetoric. Uh, it was, you know, talking about the unhinged rhetoric, and and I, I, it was along the lines that I lines that I've mentioned before that, you know, there would be a bloody, bloody civil war, and you know, he, um, Biden was a Chinese communist puppet, and uh, they they could never ever uh, tolerate uh, leaving him in power. We're going to leave it there, Roger Parloff. We will check in again with you next week. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.